Hi guys, welcome to CA Inter Financial Management. I am C. Anu Jalota. We have been trying now for months that we try to give you every possible thing in CA Inter. We started away with CA Inter costing MCQs. Once that was finished, we started away with the regular lectures of costing every Saturday, Sunday of our previous batch. Both of them together ensure that everything that you all need in costing is coming to you without any cost. That includes the colored books, that includes the summary of every question, the ranking of every question. So ensure that you will make proper use of all those things. Okay. And then we started away with C Inter Financial Management. For those of you who all have brothers or sisters or friends in CA Final, there is a subject called as Strategic Cost and Performance Management. All the MCQs of that also do come on our YouTube channel. Okay, let's start it off for today. This chapter is all about capital structure and one of the very important things is something called as agency problems. This question is all about that. The cost of monitoring management is considered to be an. You all have bankruptcy cost, you all have transaction cost, you all have agency cost. You will have institutional cost. Now, the answer, as I've told, you might comment because I've already told, okay, but the answer is agency cost. What actually do you mean by agency cost and who needs to be monitoring? See, do remember that whenever there is a corporate form of an organization, there are two big parties who are involved. One of them is called as a management, the managers, purchase manager, sale manager, investment manager, your uh, finance manager. The other are the shareholders. Now, objective of both these people might not be same. And that leads to something called as agency costs. Okay, agency costs come because of agency problems. I just thought that I'll give you exact meaning of the term agency problems. Okay, agency problems in any capital structure refer to the conflict of interest between the stakeholders of the company. Who are the stakeholders? Particularly between the managers, that is the agents and the shareholders. Shareholders are also called as a principal because the managers act on behalf of the shareholders. Okay, because shareholders cannot come to the company to run the company. These problems arise because the goals of the managers might not always align with the goals of the shareholders. Try to be thinking if you are a manager, what will be your aim? Sir, your aim should be to earn highest money, correct? Okay, now your compensation, your salary, your bonus might be tied to various things. And due to that, sometimes there will be problems. I'll continue leading to decisions that could negatively impact company's value. So sometimes managers can take some decisions which will be good for them, but which might be very bad for the company as a whole, that is the shareholders. I have few examples for you. Say problem number one, manager self-interest. Okay, now there are two problems that might be coming. One of them is called as over-investment. Over-investment means what? that managers might like to invest or to undertake lot amount of businesses and start to over invest in multiple projects. Let me read this. Managers might invest in the project that increase the size of the company even if these projects do not maximize shareholders value. Now, if you all have done say capital budgeting, okay, try to be thinking like this. Suppose currently the company is getting a IRR of 10%. Okay, now the managers try to be thinking there are some funds that are available to them. They will give a IRR of say 4% only, but still they try to be undertaking this particular thing. Although the COC of the company, the cost of capital of the company is slightly higher, but these managers can start to be thinking, let's not keep any funds idle. Let's try to keep on doing the businesses. At least returns will keep on coming. I'll continue. This could be driven by a desire for personal benefits like increased power, prestige or job security. Suppose a manager might start to be thinking there is one business where we are getting 10%. Let's try to start another business whereby the IRR will be 4%. Once that particular business will start coming, they will not stop because there is capital that is trapped into that. Okay. And might be I will get a percentage of revenue from the current business. Okay. And from the new business. I understand new business gives us the lesser returns. But at least I will add something in this case to the salary or to the bonus that I am getting. Okay. 
so over investment is one of the problems that happens that managers start to be thinking that let's try not to be keeping any funds vacant okay then there is another problem also called as under investment conversely managers might avoid investing in valuable projects if they perceive them as risky particularly if their compensation is tied up to short term performance or if they fear losing the job suppose there is some very good project that is coming up okay risky project but very good project okay but slightly a long term one okay these managers might not like to undertake such projects why because if they undertake and if it is risky and if risk does not pay off then their compensation might become negative also okay company might start to have a penalty on those particular people and in short run these projects might not give lot amount of return so therefore although in long run they might be good risky okay they might be good but they might be risky many uh, project managers might not try to undertake these particular kind of things as such okay this was my example number 1 of something called as agency problem can i have another example okay let's have it say example number 2 debt equity conflict now in that i have tried to be having two things over here first of that is called as risk shifting when a company has high level of debt managers take on excessively risky projects if the project will succeed shareholders will benefit but if it does not the creditors will bear the brunt of the loss this behavior benefits the shareholders at the expense of the debt holders okay try to be thinking that <coughs> company took lot amount of debt okay and started some particular business if that business will be paying good if that business does good okay obviously the benefit of that will be coming to the shareholders because company will still be paying a fixed amount of interest okay but if suppose that business does not do good if suppose that business does not do good company might not have enough money even to give back the debt capital that it has borrowed forget about the interest okay at that time try to be thinking who will suffer in this case your debt holders will start to be suffering on the expense of the shareholders okay so therefore like you know if the project will do good shareholders will benefit if it does bad then in that case who might suffer in such cases the debenture holders so therefore this is something that is not good because people are not getting rewarded in a proper way then there is one other example of called as debt overhang If a company is heavily indebted the managers might pass over profitable investment opportunities because the benefit will primarily go to the creditors rather than the shareholders this can lead to under investment and harm the company's long term growth what those guys are saying like you know that if a company already has huge amount of debt okay then the managers might not take up even good projects also because in this case they can start to be thinking already the company is in so much amount of debt okay so therefore let's not start to be taking all these kind of projects okay basically they are trying to like you know shield okay the creditors okay the creditors means the debenture holders who have given the money as such okay so in that case again this will lead to under investment this will not lead to the growth of the company okay this was my second example let's have uh, say a third one that'll, that'll be far better dividend policy try to be thinking managers might favor paying huge dividends to the shareholders rather than reinvesting that in the company particularly if their own compensation is tied up to company stock price i'll give one example of such company there is a company called as vedanta in india v e d l vedanta uh its stock code okay as per the nsc index is v e d l now this company gives huge amount of dividend four times in a year okay now <clears throat> if a company if the manager decides let's start to be giving huge amount of dividends you will understand that the money of the company will be going to the shareholders that will stop to be restricting company's growth for the future we all have done this thing in dividend policy also okay that if the company thinks it can earn far more as compared to whatever the shareholders can return if the money is returned to them okay then in that case it is better that company keeps the money with themselves only but but the managers might start to be thinking like you know let's give the money back okay to the shareholders why because then shareholders will be happy okay share prices will be going up and if these managers compensation or their bonus is tied up to the share prices automatically then these guys will get a benefit as such okay these are few of the examples okay of agency problems means what the shareholders wants and what 
what the managers want are totally different. Okay, the cost of all these things usually results in losses which cannot be seen. Okay, and those particular things are called as agency cost. Okay, but I have one more kind of a problem over here. Free cash flow problem. Free cash flow problem means what? See, whenever a company generates excessive cash beyond whatever is needed for operations and investments, managers might use these funds inefficiently by investing them in the projects whereby the return is low, increasing their own compensation or engaging in wasteful spending. Shareholders typically prefer that excess cash should be returned to them either through the dividends or stock buybacks. Now, this is exactly opposite of our previous thing. Suppose a company is doing super business, super business, okay, lot amount of cash comes. That cash has got no use for the company because it does not have any more investment opportunities, no new products in mind. So what should be done? This money should be returned back to the company, okay. But what managers might do, they might invest these kind of uh, excessive money in some projects which do not give very huge rate of return, okay. Now, sir, how will that benefit the managers? They might start to be getting some bonus for these kind of businesses also. So therefore, who will suffer? Shareholders. Who will benefit? Managers. Okay. This is again one of the types of agency problems that might happen. Okay. So cost of monitoring management is considered to be which particular cost beta agency cost. This is one of the best kind of like, you know, a, an example structure that you can be getting that companies usually spend a lot amount of money in managing the managers. Okay. That basically is called as agency cost. They have to be ensuring that managers and the shareholders are at the same level. Okay. But usually they are not because the interest of the shareholder and the manager might not be seen. That gives rise to agency problems and that gives rise to a cost called as agency cost. Okay. So agency cost could include the examples that I gave of under investment of over investment. All these are cost only as such. Okay. Ultimately company suffers due to all these things okay so answer is c over here agency problems that's it i'll see you all next time in another question till then take care guys bye